Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Kate, and here on my channel, I talk about true crime stories. Please remember to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and hitting that notification bell so that you never miss out on any of my future videos or podcasts, because I have a podcast as well. So good to have you here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. And yeah, <laughs> words. Um, grab a snack. And let's dive into another story. Okay, so Lee. Lee, Lee, Lee. My goodness. Not you, Lee. Not my friend, Lee, but a different one. He knows who he is. Anyway, Lee was a fascinating person who had some inconsistencies in her stories about her personal life. Some people knew her as being unmarried with zero children and no family, while there were others that thought she had a husband. And a couple of kids. So despite these discrepancies, Lee was known for her captivating storytelling and lively personality or personalities. However, after she passed away in October of 2015, it was revealed that she had a massive secret. This woman, not a good person. So over the years, she had mentioned that she kept a medical skeleton at her very tidy home, which she had acquired during her time working as a nurse. Lee was known as the epitome of a great neighbor. Everyone loved her. They thought she was awesome. She would put on barbecues and she was super friendly. And she also looked after the communal garden. She made it really beautiful. But, you know... On the outside, she looked great. People loved her. Inside, she's an evil, heartless witch. There was great sadness when 74-year-old Lee did die. Um, she had breast cancer, and she battled it, and she lost. However, that respectable facade is now in complete ruins because she has been named by police as the prime suspect in the death of her husband 18 years earlier. So this story, it begins about a decade earlier when Lee was only 16 years old. Ah, such a fun age. She had started having an affair. Don't do that. This guy was a married man. And he was John Sabine. He was 11 years older than her. So it's kind of, you know, what's he doing sniffing around a 16-year-old? But whatever. Lee worked as a nurse at a hospital in Bedfordshire. She took care of John, who was being treated for injuries that he got during the Korean War. So they struck up a friendship and then it turned into something more. John's wife actually found out because Lee fell pregnant. Um, yeah not good and John's wife basically kicked him to the curb was like nah done we're done with this don't want that around so John and Lee they moved in together they went to New South Wales which is in Australia they got married and they popped out four kids yeah later they moved to New Zealand where I'm from beautiful New Zealand and they lived in Auckland and they had another child yeah Auckland is actually really beautiful has places that are beautiful but yeah, they owned prize winning dogs and were well known at dog shows in the area. But after a few years, John and Lee, they decided that they wanted to go back to Australia because, you know, that's what Aussies do. They come to New Zealand and they're like, oh, I miss home and they go back to Australia. We do it too. I lived in Australia, but I always come home. Anyway, um, she went back to Australia with her husband and she became a cabaret dancer and he was an accountant. So Lee and John left New Zealand, but the thing is they left without their kids. They basically abandoned their children. They left them in state-run homes. All of the kids were under 10 years old at this time. Pretty freaking ruthless, right? Ruthless. But they didn't stay in Australia for too long before they decided to come back to New Zealand. And this time, they did not come to Auckland, because, you know, their children are here. Uh, they went further down the line. They're still in the North Island, but they went further down the line. They travelled around the country for a bit, um, quite a while, actually, before they were tracked down. Because the thing is, they illegally abandoned their kids, so the authorities were looking for them. <laughs> so they found them. They tracked them down, got them. Um, they did try to 
get the kids and the parents together, you know, start their relationship again and whatnot. But it didn't really work. The children, you know, they were upset. They were angry. And Lee would get into quite a few fights with one of her daughters. Not physical, argumentative. Um, yeah, so this couple, they were tracked down. Um, but because they did leave their children, their children just... They, they wanted parents, they wanted to be, you know, a family, but they just could not move past the fact that their parents did that to them. So, yeah. Authorities, they did really try to make this family unit work. But like I said, Lee got into some pretty bad arguments with one of her daughters and the family just could not get past what they had done. So the kids, they're angry. Uh, they got ditched, which, you know, would make any child angry. And I would be angry, definitely. And, yeah, they they tried. They tried. didn't work. The couple's second son, Steve, actually mentioned that his parents re-entered their lives when he was 23 years old. And they, they did attempt to reconcile, but their efforts only lasted for a really short time. Apparently, people would ask the kids why they tried to reconnect with Lee and John after being treated so badly by them. And they said that all their lives, all they wanted was their mum and their dad. How freaking heartbreaking is that? Honestly, apparently Lee was really cruel. Like she wrote this note to her daughter. I'll put it up if I can find it. It's just, she's just a, she's just a bad person. She treated her kids like crap. Also, according to Steve, one of his brothers, he never actually came to terms with what happened during their childhood. And it really affected him throughout his entire life. And he ultimately took his own life. Absolutely heartbreaking. So basically, Lee's taken two lives. Steve also said that with their parents, it was always about them and never about the children. Narcissistic, maybe? Then in the 90s, I miss the 90s, the couple decided to start over once again and then they moved back to Australia. They went to New South Wales. In this new chapter, Lee began using the name Anne Sabine and also Lee Sabine. Police think that John was killed in 1997, the same year that they moved into their apartment in Bordeaux. I think it's how you say it, Bordeaux. I should know because I lived in New South Wales, but oh well. His wife never actually told the police that he went missing, which was, you know, very suspicious. What's even more surprising is that his name, it actually still showed up on the list of people eligible to vote for the small property that they lived in. So she didn't tell the authorities anything, but she did tell people that he took off. It is believed that Lee received benefits using her husband's name by having his pension deposited into a shared account. So she's also committing benefit fraud. Naughty. The, the neighbours, they were completely unaware of all of this. They thought that the couple just split up and he moved on. No, no. Just a few years ago, Lee was featured in a council magazine talking about her love for gardening. She like had so many pictures taken, that's how I got all the pictures. She talked about how she turned the area outside her apartment where, you know, she lives with other people into a, you know, little piece of paradise, as she called it. She liked to nurture her garden and she said that growing up in New Zealand, which she did not, she did not grow up in New Zealand, she had always been used to working with soil. Okay. Lee mentioned that she enjoys spending time outside and prefers to be, you know, out there than inside watching telly. These are her words. She expressed that she takes pride in her home and she wants her neighbours to feel the same way. <laughs> Little did they know that her husband was literally being stashed underneath her bed. She mentioned that every summer she throws a big barbecue and all of the neighbours come along. She said it's helped bring everybody closer together. And also little did the neighbours know that he was in the shed at one point. She moved him around. So in 97, 67 year old John disappears. Gone. Poof. We don't know where he is. And Lee did not report it to the police. We know that. Apparently he left on his own. No. But this man, he did not leave. He was killed. Lee had killed him in a terrible way. 
she had used a decorative stone frog that was in their bedroom and she just whacked him with it. Then when he was dead, she wrapped his body in plastic and bags, um, essentially preserving him and she hid him under the bed. She would often, you know, rewrap uh, and move his body. So she ended up moving his body to the garden shed and then into the attic. This guy was basically mummified by the time I found him. Shockingly, she continued to collect his pension for 18 years. This went on for 18 years. How does somebody just go missing for 18 years and nobody do anything about it? Anyway, she died October 30th. Um, a few weeks later, her friend Michelle, she was going through Lee's things when she found a large package. I'm sure we all know what is inside that large package. Without knowing what was inside, Michelle opened it and she discovered a mummified body of John. Gross. Imagine how scary that would have been. I probably would have fainted. I have low blood pressure. I definitely would have fainted. Michelle, she said that she was really, really distraught and it messed with her for so long to the point where, like, she went insane and the police started looking at her as the person who did it. But she didn't. <laughs> no. They actually briefly arrested her because they did think that she was responsible because she, you know, just flipped out and just... Yeah, she wasn't well for a long time. John's death was determined to be caused by blunt force trauma, and this matched perfectly to the frog-shaped ornament. So this frog, it was later found, it was in a box of trinkets that Lee had left to her friend Michelle. So, yeah, there you go. It said that Lee was apparently really smart, super confident, and a little bit eccentric. She would say things like darling all the time, like she caught everyone darling, like darling, that kind of situation. And she was real flamboyant. It's it's puzzling because usually, you know, when people have something massive to hide, like keeping a secret of, you know, killing your husband and hiding him in places, they tend to keep to themselves, right? Not Lee. <laughs> she was hiding in plain sight. She was louder than ever. She was all everywhere. So in 2015, during the investigation into her death, it was revealed that Lee grew up in a Welsh village. She was the daughter of a guy called Ronald, he's a coal miner, and a woman called Margaret. And apparently Margaret had left the family when Lee was only little. So the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Lee was moved around quite a lot. She went from all different relatives to foster homes and orphanages. And, yeah, she, she had a bit of a messy upbringing. Anyway, this is a short one today. I'm leaving it there. If you guys want me to dive deep into this story, do let me know, and I will. I'll do a deep dive into the story. I just really wanted to tell it. I saw it, like, the other day, and I was like, oh, my God, I need to tell the story. Hmm. Just be careful, eh? Moral of the story. Don't trust anyone. <laughs> no, that's terrible. Trust somebody within reason. <laughs> However, it is important not to go through life being scared and thinking that everyone is bad because not everybody is bad. Not everybody. Maybe 90%. No, I'm joking. <laughs> oh dear. I talked about too much true crime. So yeah. Anyway, I'm happy. I've, I'm having a good day. I had a pretty good um, night. Yeah. I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, edit that out. I guess the lesson from this story is that you can never fully know somebody, right? They might be kind to you and, you know, you never think anything bad. But you, you never know. We hmm. just got to remember that not everybody is bad. And there are good people out there. Just not Lee. She's terrible. Anyway, I'm out. Have a wonderful day. Um, if you're listening via the podcast and you want to watch the video, head over to my channel on YouTube. It is Kate Sharon True Crime. That is me for today. Um, I was going to say something, I just don't remember. My brain is gone. It's just jumped out of my head and ran across the room. There it goes. <laughs> Jump out the window. It's legging it down the street. Now it's back. Come back here. I've gone crazy. Oh no. Ah. 
I think I'm tired. I've got like, this whole insomnia thing going on. And also, like, some other stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.